I was going to have something that uh, here that's created that uh, uh, that that God didn't create. And if it's created, then it wouldn't it have to be God creating Himself? You see, we do have to go all the way, don't we? It does not come in. Never can there be such a man. Never can there be such a body. Since God does not create or form himself, how can man create or form himself into other lives and bodies? Since God does not create, destroy, and then recreate himself, how then can man be created, destroyed, and recreated? Impossible. Utterly impossible. He can't, he isn't. And what can man do or be that is not God being and God being omni-active, all activity. God is the only activity and the, sub the only substance that is active. If God could ever become born man, God would have to become less than God. You can't imagine God being a born man the way so-called born man behaves himself, you know? No, sir. If God could become born man, God would have to become less than God. He would have to become imperfect. Yes, don't you see? If God could create and even be so-called born right. he would have to become imperfect, temporary, subject to illness, subject to death. Can you imagine an infinite eternal life being subject to death? <coughs> Such foolishness is impossible, of course. Incidentally, pertaining to, be, to the foolish, if you know this, uh, a God is dead thing, you know, they're talking about God is dead and all that poppycock. Uh, you know something? If God were, a de were dead, uh, there wouldn't be anyone alive to make such a silly statement. <laughs> well, that's fact, isn't it? Because what, what life is there but God to be alive? So that makes me laugh, really. God, who is eternal life, is just silly. Now, let us, as one inseparable consciousness, realize that we are the following truths. I am the visible evidence of every truth I have ever seen, of every truth I have ever known. Every truth I have ever perceived is a certain fact right here. Right now, every truth I have ever known, I know right here, right now. Every truth I have ever known, I am right now. Every truth I have ever seen was true while I was seeing or perceiving it. Every truth I have ever known, I know right now. Every truth I know, I am right now. Every absolute truth I have visibly been, I am. Read that again. Every absolute truth I have visibly been, I am visibly right now. <coughs> Right now, every iota of perfection I have ever been, I am right now. 
I am identically the same consciousness that I was while I was seeing or perceiving the greatest truth I have ever known. Right now. It really should not be necessary for anyone to be or to become visibly older or to deteriorate. Now, I'm going to close this now, Jenny. No, because I don't want to go into this next part. It's too long. I think we'll just uh, I'll close it, but I do want to. I do want to read this poem. It brings out something that uh, I love. The title is... Um, Completeness. O oh, glorious, infinite heaven and earth, O oh, beauty, light, divine, eternal life, there is no birth, no death, no change, no sign of darkness, density, or fear, no consciousness of woe, just ecstasy that I am here as all there is, and so, as beauty, peace, and joy, I see that midnight skies and noontime sun are all alike to me. That's just what we've been seeing. There is one poem in here that has brought uh, uh, what I would say what the world would call uh, healing to many, many. And if you'd like, I'll read this to you. Would you like? See, this is the one. I don't want to make a mistake here. There is no interim of time or space that can intrude, usurp, displace the omnipresent life I am. There is no density in form, no mortal consciousness that's born of human parenting and then must suffer, sicken, age, and die. How could this be? There is one I. What matters it? Though clouds appear to dim the light, so calm, so clear. What cloud can change the starlit night? What evil can there be to blight the ever-perfect life I am? Clouds may appear to come and go, but I remain the same. I know I am the light in which I stand. That has done a great deal of good. Well, think you've had enough for tonight? Ah, uh, somehow or other, I have been consciousness very, very uh, definitely, those who are tuning in from all over the world and from our own nation too. And I felt uh, perhaps it would be a nice thing to have a few moments of contemplation and have them in consciousness, uh, knowing that uh, where they are, there are we. Where we are, here are they, and that whatever our revelations are, they are their revelations too. And whatever their revelations are, they are our revelations too. I feel <coughs> that it would be the loving thing to do, don't you? Yes. Yes, I feel that we should do this for a few moments. You know, <clears throat> I think it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing 
to be able to realize our unconfined nature and the unconfined nature of everyone. And this is another thing that is so, uh, so um, satisfying, really, about this, is that in our contemplation, I, I've spoken before about this, but in our contemplation, we can be in our own living rooms, our own studies or whatever, and contemplate and realize that what we are seeing is really fulfilling a purpose throughout the entire world. Wherever there is, a, wherever there seems to be a need of any kind, why, there are we. There are we. Uh, someone came up last night and said uh, uh, that uh, uh, suddenly she uh, found me sitting on the side of her bed. Well, this sort of thing takes place, you know, right along, really. Sometimes they, uh, sometimes they see uh, uh, the body, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes I'm aware of it. More often, I'm not. Doesn't make any difference. However, if it seems to be necessary for the body to be seen, for instance, perhaps to feel some fear or uh, uh, something like that, the body will be seen. It, it will be seen. But unless it's necessary, as a rule, it isn't seen. But there is a feeling. Well, now, what, what really takes place here, they, they have not at all uh, uh, touched the consciousness of someone called Marie, as you know. Uh, they've touched this indivisible, uh, indivisible, ever-present Christ consciousness, which really is their own consciousness you see, which is your consciousness, which is my consciousness, which is it's, it's that impersonal Christ consciousness. And it will manifest itself in any way that is necessary to, well, we'll say, a, a fulfill whatever seems to be their need or the purpose of its being at that, at that moment. And so it is, um, it is a tremendous uh, fulfillment of purpose to realize that we, that we uh, knowing our infinite indivis indivisibility and the infinite power of this omnipresence, uh, uh, that we uh, really are uh, fulfilling a tremendous purpose. Doesn't it make you feel good? It's really... Love in action. That's what it is. So. <clears throat> well, I mentioned last night that I was going to go into the Gospel according to Thomas uh, this morning a little bit. I said uh, uh, that uh, in the beginning there's so much pertaining to what we've been having, but I would like to just read along here for a little while. All right? <clears throat> These are the secret words in which the living Jesus spoke, and Didymus Judas Thomas wrote. And he, and he said, Whoever finds the explanation of these words will not taste death. Jesus said, Let him who seeks not cease seeking, until he finds. Now, what have we been seeking? <coughs> what have all of us actually been seeking? That's right. Our true identity, but more than that. More than that. Our infinite, boundless, eternal Self, capital S. Yes, it's God. We've been seeking God, but God is this self. And all the while, we've been seeking the God that is this self and the self that is this God. We've been seeking the, 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 the uh, well, really, we've been seeking the, the I that we were and knew we were before it seemed that we lost track of it, don't you see? 
Christmas up here. Not peacekeeping. I think his opening statement here, whoever finds the explanation of these words will not face death. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's a tremendous thing. Uh, uh, you know you could live in this book, really. One third. Let him who seeks not cease seeking until he finds. Well, we're finding, aren't we? We really are finding. And when he finds, he will be troubled. Yes, indeed so. I'll tell you, there are those in this room right now who, uh, having uh, found this for the first time, seem to be deeply troubled. Deeply troubled. I know what I seem to go through. When I uh, when it first came, I uh, I I walked all night long. I got out and walked. I thought I would climb the walls. I couldn't understand what was going on here, you know. Yet I could not stop. I could not stop. And I'm so glad that I didn't. Well, I couldn't anyway. Why should I be glad that I didn't? But it was was utterly impossible. I just had to go on and on and on. And oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. The glory of it now, the fear glory of it, it's worth it. Keep right on going, it's worth it. Believe me, believe me. And when he finds, he will be troubled. And when he has been troubled, he will marvel. He will marvel. And we do marvel at the beauty, at the glory, at the freedom, and particularly at the joy and the love of this. The sheer constant joy that just bubbles and bubbles and bubbles, you know. There's no end to it. And the love. And he will reign over all. Now, you know... We spoke yesterday of this being the kingdom of heaven, and we are the king of the kingdom. This is the reign, not a reign over people, not even a reign over things, but a reign over all duality, all duality, complete freedom from all duality. Jesus said, Those who lead you say to you, See, the kingdom is in heaven. The kingdom is in heaven, that's what they say. If they say this, then the birds of the heaven will precede you. If we believe that heaven is somewhere else and not right here, and we are not in it, and we are not it. Well, true enough, the birds can be more aware of it than we are. You know? And this is true. If they say to you, it is in the sea, then the fish will precede you. No matter whether it's high or low or where, Unless it is right here, unless we are aware that it is right here, that this is it. Well, we just uh, uh, why even the the, the, um, the fish themselves, as Jesus said, would be more aware of being the, in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of heaven, than we are. Don't you see? It could very well be. It could very well be. But the kingdom is within you, and it is without you. Now, of course, uh, later on in this blessed book, Jesus mentions the fact that the inside and the outside, the above and the below, are the same. So he doesn't really mean without you, because there isn't any without for us. There couldn't possibly be. But he does say it is within you, and it is without you. If you know yourself, this, seeking for this, you see. We've been seeking for ourselves. We've been seeking to know ourselves. All right? 
If you know yourselves, then you will be known. You see, knowing ourselves, we know God. Knowing God, God knows us, because it's all one. God knowing himself. If you know yourselves, then you will be known, and you will know that you are the sons of the living Father. And you notice in this book that uh, living is capitalized. Now, uh, this is an authentic translation. These men know what they're talking about. They're not, uh, uh, they're scholars, you know. Yes, there are some of them who are, uh, 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 were a church men, that's true. But, um, there is an honest translation. And, and I notice that wherever there's the least bit of doubt, why they'll, they'll put a word in brackets or something, you know. But it is an honest translation. But that living father, uh, uh, the word living particularly capitalized, means uh, the life that is God. The life that is God. But if you do not know yourselves, then you are in poverty. You do not know yourself. Then you know nothing. That's poverty. And that's the only kind of poverty there could possibly be. If you know not yourself, you are in poverty, and you are poverty, he says. You know nothing, you are poverty, you are nothing. <coughs> if you know not yourself. So, beloved ones, you can see that all of our search has been for this very purpose, to find and to know the self, the God self, and thus to find and to know God Now, would you like to consider that a minute before we go on? Or not? I think so. In the next section here, uh, Jesus is referring uh, to uh, uh, what we have spoken about, about knowing what we were, you know, uh, before and even at, at the time of what you might call birth, you see, it's a, the, the seeming birth, I mean. Jesus said, the man old in days will not hesitate to ask a little child of seven days about the place of life. Now, isn't that tremendous? Why? Because the child of seven days has so recently experienced the fullness, the infinitude, the joy, the completely. Uh, not that he's left it. Now, don't, uh, don't get me wrong on that. Not that he's left it, but the seeming world of, uh, uh, oh, the, the heaviness, the harshness, the the darkness, the selfishness, the, the ego, the, all of these things that belong or seem to belong in and as the world of born man, they haven't had a chance to get at him so much. You see? And he, he's, he, he's more clear. He's more clear on what, uh, on, on as, as um, Jesus said, uh, the place of life. What is the place of life? It has to be. It simply has to be. That experience, that being, that kingdom of heaven, really, that we are in and that we are and know ourselves to be before it seems that this other takes place. So I think that's a very interesting statement there, there, don't you? Yes. But that brings that out.
And then he says on the next page, Know what is in thy sight, and what is hidden from thee will be revealed to thee. Now, you know, we've been speaking in this uh, experience here uh, about the invisible versus the visible. Remember? All right. Know what is in thy sight. When you look at anything, know what you're seeing. That's what he means. When you look at anything, when you see anything, know what you're seeing. Don't accept the false appearance of it at all. Know what is in thy sight. And that which seems to be invisible, that which seems to be hidden from thee, will to be, be revealed, will be visible. This is what Jesus means here. Now, those of you who have the tapes on the Gospel according to Thomas and have listened to them, I'm sure you must realize, you have, don't you? Yes. You must realize that this goes farther. Know what is in thy sight. Know what you're seeing. Don't be deceived by some appearance of solidity, of inharmony. Don't be deceived by an appearance of babyhood, youth, or age. Any sign of anything other than the very peak, the very height of your glorious being, of the glorious being that is the kingdom of heaven that you are. Know what is in thy sight, and what seems to be invisible, and what is hidden from thee will be, will be revealed visibly. Isn't that beautiful? You come to the point where you don't even see very much that looks solid anymore, you know? This is a fact. And you're so aware of light in form that it's a little bit of a shock when you see something that looks a little bit dark in form, don't you know? Really. Uh, what, what, has, what seems normal uh, uh, to see before uh, seems abnormal, really, when you're accustomed to seeing things as they are. You can understand that, can't you? Uh -huh. For there is nothing hidden that will not be manifest, manifest, visible. There is nothing invisible that is not to be visibly evident. This is what he said. Now I'm going to go back. Know what is in thy sight, and what is hidden from thee will be revealed to thee. For there is nothing hidden which will not be manifest. Nothing hidden. Nothing invisible. Nothing that seems invisible. That is not to be visible. And we are on our way. That's the glory of it. That's the joy of it. That's what, that's what makes you bubble and giggle and laugh and, and uh, you know, all of these things. Isn't it so? <laughs> yes. Now, I, I'm just, I, I'm not doing all of this because, uh, goodness, I could spend a year talking on this. I really could. I love this book. <laughs> I really do. Now, I spoke uh, here again. Uh, we we come to <laughs> we come to the uh, uh, another reference uh, to the uh, to our knowing what we were and where we were and how we were before what seemed to be birth, you know, overtook us. Now, uh, and, and this just just one of us. He says here. On the day of when you were one, ye became two.
on the day when ye were one. One infinite, indivisible, one, this absolute truth, then it seems you got born and became two. Soul and body. See? Life and body. God and man. Duality. You see? On the day when you were one, ye became two. But when ye have become two, what will you do? That just really is it with a question there. When you have become two, what will you do? What is there to do but what we're doing? There's nothing else. There's no other way. There's no other way whatsoever. Isn't this a great book? Oh, my. Now, I spoke about uh, the, the fear of uh, so many, you know, to uh, simply make the statement, uh, uh, God is the I that I am, or I am God, you know. Uh, uh, this uh, is, some of this is on the tape, not all of it. Now, uh, Jesus took um, uh, Thomas. He took him and he withdrew. He spoke three words him. Three words to him. Now, when Thomas came to his companions, they asked him, what did Jesus say to thee? Thomas said to them, if I tell you one of the words which he said to me, you will take up stones and throw at me, and fire will come down from the stones and burn you up. What were the three words? But more than that. The three words. What was it that they accused Jesus of? That That's it. Making himself equal with God. All right. The, well, these three words were I am God. Those were the three words. And Thomas knew, just as the world today would if it were able to, if there were power in malice and evil and all of this sort of thing, the world today would crucify us, would crucify anyone who had the temerity to say, I am God. And you can only say this it, 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 uh, to say, I am God, if there's at least tiny bit of personal sense, personal ego, personal pride, even a, a sense of, of being a person at all, you can't say this. Because, you see, it takes God to say it. No person can say this. It, it, but when there's no person around, then it's God. Then it isn't, it isn't a someone here saying, I am God. It's God saying, I am God. Well, what in the world is sacrilegious about that? I am God. But uh, furthermore, uh, Thomas knew that uh, even as, um, well, you know what happened uh, to those uh, who crucified Jesus. You know what happened to, to Judas? Well, he knew that for them, themselves, if they, they seemed to turn on him and try to destroy him, they were really trying to destroy God. And instead of that, they would seem to destroy themselves. That's what he's saying here, you see. When he says, uh, if I tell you one of the words which he said to me, you will take up stones and throw at me, and fire will come, and the stones uh, from the stones and burn you up. It would be their own self-destruction. You see, if there were such a thing as self-destruction, I mean, 
but he knew better, so he just didn't. Now, would you like to think about that a minute? Or is that clear up to now? All right. Jesus said, when you see him who was not born of woman, prostrate yourself upon your face and adore him. He is your father. When you see him who is not born of woman, prostrate yourself upon your face and adore him. He is your father. What is a father? The father is the son. He is yourself. The father is the son. The son is the father. The uncreated, unborn. He that is not born of woman. Prostrate yourself. Honor this one. Honor this one and this one only. Do not honor. Why, well, don't even believe. Don't even believe in the kind of, of man that, that seems to be the born man that seems to be a born man. Believe only, honor only the man that is not born, the man, the uncreated man, which is the Christ, which is the Father. This is what that means. Want me to read it again? See what you see in it? Jesus said, when you see him who was not born of woman, Prostrate yourselves upon your face and adore him. He is your father. And didn't Jesus say, My father and I are one? My father and I are the same one. I and the father are one. My father worketh and I hitherto and I work. All of this. Isn't this you? Isn't it the same Christ that you are? Who else could it be? What else could it be? Can you see why I love this book? Oh, boy. Mm. The disciples said to Jesus, Tell us how our end will be. How many times have I been asked, well, what's it like after death? And I've said, well, what's it like right here? If there's any death, this is it. Born man is the death, if we were such a thing. And we're pretty lively and kicking around here. So, <laughs> isn't it so? We are alive. So you see, right as they say, in the midst of life there is death. Well, that's a lot of poppycock. In the midst of death, there is life. You know? Truly. If there is such a thing as death, if there could be. There, you see, the, uh, uh, Jesus speaks about, about the second death having no power over him. Well, what he means, not in here, I don't believe. But uh, uh, he speaks of it having no power it, uh, over the one who really sees through the first death. You see? Well, if there were such a thing as death, it would be the birth, you see. So, according to that, we're all supposed to be dead. But in the midst of this, right here, in the midst of death, there is life. So nothing happened to us, don't you see? The life that we were, we are. The life that we were before birth seemed to come along. We are. Now, uh, please don't uh, mistake me. I, I'm not trying to infer that anyone should not have children. I don't mean that at all, you know, because that's, uh, that's not my province, and uh, we love these children. And, and, and as I said last night, it's the most unselfish love there is. It, it's, uh, it's right. It, it's just as I've said many times, well, uh, uh, People, when, when, uh, we were in, when I was in Christian Science for a long while, lived uh, just to uh, get a corner across the street from one of the large hospitals, and 
Oh, uh, the, uh, my science friends would say uh, to me, uh, uh, don't you wish there were no such things as hospitals, doctors, and all that? And I said, I certainly do not. I can't imagine anything more cruel than taking away all the doctors and all the hospitals. They're needed now. They're necessary now. They, why, what, look, at these, look at these ones who don't know what we do, don't seem to know. Look at how desperate they'd be. Look at the way they would seem to suffer. They wouldn't know what to do. What a terrible thing it would be. Of course we need the doctor. Of course we need the hospital. But even more than that, up to now, it seems, where most of us are, we need the babies. So I'm not, I'm not preaching against having children or anything like that. I don't mean that. But I do mean that we do ultimately have to go beyond it, to see beyond it. That's what I do mean. So, yes, um, the disciples said to Jesus, tell us how our end will be. Jesus said, have ye then discovered the beginning? So that ye inquire about the end. Well, what is the beginning? How can you tell anything about the end? How can you tell what it's like after death when, when, if you've forgotten what it was like before birth? You see? Because there's no difference. But to me, the beauty of it is uh, uh, the way, uh, uh, the, the absolute proof. You see the, oh, yes. It's the invisible that is the proof this that seems to be invisible, that is the, the a present, positive proof, right here and now, that nothing changes, that we stay the same. You see, because it's still, life seems to be invisible. Well, we're alive. We're the same alive, although it seems to be invisible, you see. Consciousness seems to be invisible. Well, we're conscious, for heaven's sake, see. So, uh, we still, uh, uh, we're still what we were. You see, well, intelligence is supposed to be invisible. All right, we're intelligent, we hope. <laughs> and, but, well, we are, anyway, let's say we are. Well, anyway, uh, we are intelligent. We are the same intelligence that we were before. So nothing has been, uh, it seems to be invisible. And above all, we are loving. And you know, that's one thing I love about the American people. I believe they are the most loving people I know, on, on the whole, I mean, you know. I don't mean to separate America from others and say it's better or worse or anything like that. I just love the, the kind of giving unselfishness of the country, don't you know? And how they rush in to help anyone that seems to need help anywhere, that kind of thing. I love that, you know. But we're now that's loving, you know. Uh, every act, uh, every loving, kind, unselfish act is love in action, isn't it, really? Well, isn't love the thing itself? Doesn't it seem to be invisible? Well, uh, isn't it the same love that we were before this, that seemed to be birth? Well, then we haven't changed, can we? We haven't, nothing, we've lost nothing. Nothing's been taken from us at all. Nothing, no. That's what I mean. So, uh, but this other is just as though it's something that, uh, for oh, in the our etern the eternity of our being, why it wouldn't take as long as it does to snap a finger. This other thing, you know, that kind of superimposes itself. We're not going to get all excited about that. But it's when. It's when this invisible proof that we did not, we did not change, we did not lose the being or the identity or even the substance that we were uh, uh, in this uh, so-called birth experience, uh, as it, when this, when this uh, invisible becomes visible, when, when this proof is a visible proof, then we have 
the ever-living body of flesh, the body of the ever-living flesh, and I don't mean matter, I mean flesh, you know? You can see that, can't you? When that which seems to be invisible becomes visible. Now, then Jesus went on to say, have you then discovered the beginning? Do you know anything about when you ever began? He's asking the same question we were asking here yesterday, don't you see? Does anyone remember ever having begun? Does anyone remember having been born? Conceived, that kind of thing. Have you discovered the beginning, says this blessed man? So you inquire about the end? Why bother about the end if you don't know about the beginning? <laughs> well, no, isn't that right? That's it. Then he goes on to say, For where the beginning is, there shall be the end. Where the beginning is, there shall be the end. Now, right when we seem to be born, when all of this seems to take place, whether we are aware of it or not, we have simply come to that point where it is absolutely necessary for us to perceive ourselves actively doing what we're doing right here, perceive ourselves to be the eternality that we are. That's what this means here. And then he said, Blessed is he who shall stand at the beginning, and he shall know the end, and he shall not taste death. Now, you see, Jesus was and is one uh, who, and there have been others too. There are others too. Who, even though at what they call birth, uh, 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 seemed, seemed appear, appeared to go through it, but he he didn't he didn't uh, he didn't get into this so-called human thing as, as others seemed to do. It didn't he, 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 it, it was it didn't uh, get to him if you know what I mean. Didn't seem to hypnotize him or or, or influence him or anything like that the way it does with almost all of us, you see. He didn't, he didn't seem to forget what he knew. He didn't, he didn't seem to forget what he knew. His, that wasn't his purpose in coming, you see. His, his purpose, well, he goes on in here and tells that he, he just simply put on a body of flesh, you know what I mean? He became visible so that he could be seen and, and, and known uh, uh, and so that he could fulfill his purpose. He did it deliberately, you know. It, it, it wasn't, uh, uh, it, it was his fulfillment purpose. And he's still fulfilling his purpose. God bless him. <laughs> I feel that way about this man. Now, you know, as to me, no one could tell me, well, I know. No one could tell me that he doesn't uh, walk among us. And that I know, I know. And whenever there's a purpose to be fulfilled, he is visible. But he doesn't fool around when, when there's no reason for him to be around, you know? He's got plenty to do without monkeying around with us. <laughs> no, he really is, he really is very busy. He really is very busy. And particularly these days. So, Jesus said, Blessed is he who was before he came into being. How do you like that? Blessed is he who was and knew himself to be and still knows himself to be before he came, what he was before he came into being. Isn't that glorious? Then he says, oh, I like this. 
for you have five trees in paradise. Uh, now that's a capital P, paradise, which are unmoved in summer, in winter, and their leaves do not fall. Whoever knows them will not taste death. All right, what is it? What is it that seems to see? What is it that seems to hear? Uh, 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 the things of the, the appearance of this world. The things of trouble, the things of sorrow, the thing called death, the thing called sickness, the, the thing called poverty, the thing called anything that is not absolute perfection, that is not complete joy and peace, all that goes along with it. What is this? Yes, 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 that's right. So, instead of the five, isn't it the five senses, mm -hmm. five material senses supposed to be, uh, with which we hear, which we see, and you know something? Uh, is it, uh, we, again and again it's been mentioned that in, in uh, the illumination, you never see a, a dying blade of grass. You never see a leafless tree. You never see any sign of imperfection at all. Why? Because you're not seeing with any of the so-called born five senses. You're seeing with that other eye. And I'll tell you, when you are hearing, when you are hearing, you never hear a harsh, when you're hearing with that other ear, you are, you never hear a harsh tone. You never hear uh, anything other than sheer beauty, sheer beauty. And it never stops. You know, uh, uh, it, it, it's the same thing, I suppose, it may sound strange, uh, but there is never a moment when I'm not hearing music. I'm sitting here talking, I'm hearing music. I hear music every, every waking moment of my experience. Every moment. <clears throat> and it's beautiful. Well, now what ear hears that? One of the five senses? No. That other ear. But I see this beauty, this indestructible, imperishable, eternal beauty. That other eye that Jesus speaks about. Not the so-called uh, human vision. And yet, we have to be able to then and again there again, as I've said about the hospitals, I've said about the about these uh, 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 these children and uh, the babies and all of that. We have to be able to see here too uh, the things as they seem to be. So uh, what they call human vision is necessary. That's love, don't you see? Whatever the need is at the moment, the supply for that particular need, even though that need and uh, what seems to be. Uh, that need is going to uh, be through one of these days, you know. We know that. But if at the moment it seems necessary, why, well, we've got to be able to see, so we see. Humanly. That's the way it seems, in a way. But it isn't as though... Uh, 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 the only thing that takes place is that after a while, after a while, things don't look the same. You see, you're looking at the same things, but they don't look the same. So, now let's see what else he has to say here. Yes, he, he expresses this, you see, their leaves do not fall. He expresses the same thing. And then now he says, Whoever knows them, that is, these five trees that grow in paradise, 
Well, this is a heavenly thing. This is a, a seeing things paradise uh, in and as the kingdom of heaven, which is God, you see. Well, whoever knows that he is in the kingdom of God and that he is the kingdom of God, as Jesus says, he's not going to taste death. You see, if you can't see death, you're not going to taste it. You see, if you can't see uh, 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 dying trees and, and uh, dying leaves and dying grass and dying flowers and dying this and dying that, well, then you're not going to, then you're not going to see the dying. Because why? Because you don't know a thing about it. You, you can't know it unless you see it. Is this clear? Want me to stop? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I wasn't going. <laughs> no, I'm not uh, any too eager to take the, uh, the uh, seven sending threat. But um, no, I'm not. I wonder if you'd rather I didn't go on with the gospel according to Thomas right now. <laughs> you want me to go on with it for now? All right. Ah. Uh, they said to him, Shall we then, being children, enter the kingdom? Jesus said to them, When you make the two one, when you make the two one, and when you make the inner as the outer, and the outer as the inner, and the above as the below, and when you make the male and the female into a single one, so that the male will not be male, and the female not be female, when you make eyes, eyes in the place of an eye, eyes in the place of an eye, and a hand in the place of a hand, and a foot in the place of a foot, and an image body in the place of an image, then shall ye enter the kingdom. And the whole thing is wrapped up like that, really and truly. Because they said to him, they, they want to get into the kingdom of heaven without trying very hard, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it feels anyway. So I honestly think they were trying to ride in on Jesus' coattails. <laughs> uh, Jesus said to them, Now when you make the two one, all right, now you recall just a moment ago, I spoke about the, the necessity to, to, to be able to see, you know, uh, seemingly humanly, and yet at the same time to, to see things as they are. It's as though there were two visions, don't you know? Uh, but for all practical purposes, uh, uh, that, that we, we seem to see humanly. Uh, but we don't have to see things the way they are not. You see, we don't have to. Nothing can make us. Nothing can compel us. But when you when you uh, uh, it's, uh, when you see uh, uh, things as they are, uh, uh, well, if you're you you see when you walk around and you're around with those who are not seeing as you see that kind of thing, well then yes, uh, uh, by all means.
I hope you enjoy this spiritual audio. Like, share and subscribe for more.